Amen. This morning, it's again my joy to invite a man of God who is going to minister to us and that is our missions pastor and youth pastor Emma let us put our hands together and invite pastor Emma to come and take us forward you praise the Lord God is good and all the time we are blessed to meet again today as we fellowship with one another, as we fellowship together. Hope your family is doing well. Hope your workplace is well. And I hope your business is well. Let's humble ourselves when we pray. Father, we want to say thank you for this morning. As we gather, come and speak to us. We are eagerly waiting on you. Come and encourage us. Come and motivate us. Come and rebuke us. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. Amen. Yeah, praise the Lord. Yes, you Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, this morning, we are going to handle a simple topic. And our text is taken from the book of Proverbs. Chapter 10, verses 22. I will mainly use two books, the book of Genesis chapter 22 from verses 1 to verses 6. But the main text is Proverbs chapter 10, verses 22. But the main text is Proverbs chapter 10, verses 22. Are we there? Amen. Yes, we are there. No lunidi or rabbit in my biddy. A gambi wati. Jomuxa guam kama, where Guga gawaza. Sota gata buini kebon na, wamuna go. Wow, praise the Lord. Yes, you must wait. For people who know only one language, that's English, the word is up there. The blessing of the Lord makes one rich. And he had no sorrow with it at different times. And we have learned one or two principles from it. And today, by the grace of God, I want to add on what you've already learned. Praise the Lord. When you just see the text, what come to your mind? The blessing of the Lord makes one rich. And that's our theme. The blessing of the Lord makes one rich. That's our theme this morning. Praise the Lord. Amen. But if you, if you read the whole text, it is that it, 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 it had no sorrow with it. Maybe I could ask, what is sorrow? Why is sorrow attached to riches? Praise the Lord. Because the Bible put the blessing of the Lord makes one rich. And he had no sorrow to it. That, is, that means there's another source of wealth too. Beside the blessing of God. And I want us to keep moving. Can you, can you take us forward the media team?
Take us to the next slide. This is, this is, this is a context summary. I looking from uh, uh, Proverbs chapter 10, verses 11 to 32. Mungere sula ya kumi, akanyiririka, kuva ke kumi no kumupa kwa satumwebili. Can you get us back where you took us from? The context summary? Yes. And this is a contrast. This contrasts the righteous and the wicked. Focusing on the, their different speech patterns. Their different lifestyles. Their different attitudes. And their different des destinies. Wanochaula. Omtukirivu natali mutukirivu mungeri buli omuje ye isamu mubula mubwabwe muneisa awamu nentu koza weziri. And from verses twenty 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 one through twenty seven. Okuva kanyiriya kabiri mwe mumpaka kabiri mumu samvu. I especially focus focus on the different the different results which can be expected from pursuing godliness versus pursuing sin. Eranga tu sobolo kutunulira enja ulo wakati woku go, woku goba obutu kirivu, awamu no kugoba obutali butu kirivu. Praise the Lord. Amen. Looking at the context. Botunulira engeri echa wandiki wachi noba enjiri en, en, enobweri. It can explain the whole chapter of chapter 10. E sobolo kunyonyola esula yona eye kumi. Because there were, there were issues of riches. And there were misunderstanding of riches. Especially from the body of Christ. Because to some people or to some teachers of the word they were teaching riches which is only one focus on the inheritance that we shall inherit after leaving the, leaving the world. And also condemning the worldly wealth. And on the other hand, as they were condemning the worldly wealth, there were people whose their sources of wealth were in questions because their ways of living is quite challenging to the word of God. And with that pollution, many believers tend to believe that the, the riches it's not for the for the believers. But from this context, we see the word results. That result that somebody who is pursuing riches with godliness mind. And the result of somebody who is pursuing well with Sin in at heart. And these people are not only in the world. They are even in the church. Let's 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 continue. This is chap this is chapter summary. This chapter begins with three hundred seventy five proverbs. Which are generally case lessons. These wise remarks continue the discussion of wisdom and wickedness began in chapter 1 to chapter 9. And when you reach verse 10, most of the verses, when you reach chapter 10, most of the verses there contain a sharp contrast. 
With, with the conjunction but separating the line often the subject changes from verses to verses the contrasting subjects include sons treasure work ethics reputation relationship success and speech why we are seeing contrasting subjects here it, it is because the, of the issue of godliness and wickedness. And if you look back from the context chapter, we see the issue of the results of godliness and wickedness. Praise the Lord. Can you take us to the next slide? This is this is some of the lessons learned from this portion of scripture. Some of the lessons learned from this portion of scripture. If the acquisition of wealth or material possessions represents God's blessing of a person. Implying that they are obtained in an honest, godly manner. Or, or as a result of events that have been sanctioned by God. They will not then bring with them the problems, care, and Concern that sometime accompany riches. So no ransongeo, tebidya kujia awamu nevi zibu, oba nevi intubio nabiona, ebieto lorela kubugaga. Especially if they are ill gotten, oksingila dala singa, biba bifuni dwabubi. Such as legal or criminal problems. All consequences or dispute over ownership or inheritance of the of the assets let me explain something here a bit and i want to base on the body of christ praise the lord some of some of the members in the body of christ they are so disturbed because as they come to church as they pray every day the way the manubanic life and attaining their wealth is not godly some of the born again are very corrupt where nothing can go that way without them eat, finding a way of eating something from there some of the believers are very violent they are growing land for their relatives they are growing properties they are terrorizing people who have no one to speak for them and some of, some of the believers are getting that well through prostitution and they come every day they come and bring offertory they bring tithe here but inside them there is no joy there is no peace there's a lot of sorrow. Because their wealth did not come in the right way. 
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Whereas some members have believed God and God added to them the material wealth and these people are not concerned about how to keep this wealth because they know the source is God. Praise the Lord. Take us to the next slide. There's something I'm going to explain after the next slide. Slide it, Dakewe. So I've taken a lesson from. Uh, some of the blessing or the benefit Abraham went, went through because of the blessing God has given him. And as believers, we can borrow a leaf from Abraham because it's the reason why we are here. It's the reason why we are who we are. And I just took some lesson from him. Uh, the blessing of Abraham. To understand it better, you need to begin from uh, Genesis chapter 15. You will understand all the details about Abraham. But where I pick from is Genesis chapter 22. Praise the Lord. And in Genesis chapter 22, we see Abraham was ready to obey God. Why is obedience attached to the blessing? Praise the Lord. Because as believers, as born again, there are principles that God wants us to follow. There are principles that gather, govern our existence. There are principles that govern, govern how we should operate. And there are principles that govern how we should relate with one another. And above all, when the Lord speaks, the only way we can succeed is responding in obedience. Why Abraham benefited from the blessing of God and he honed all those possessions he had, he was ready to obey God. He was ready to obey God. To, to, bring, to bring somebody on board, from, chapter, from, from verses 1 to verses 5 of chapter 22, Chapter 22, verses 1 to 5. This is a time when Abraham has brought very many questions from God. By a time God has asked him to sacrifice his one and only son. And he realized it's God who gives it's God who takes. He did not even bother to consult his wife. Because he knew the wife was going to discourage him. He knew the wife was going to abuse him. He knew the wife because of the pain of, of childbirth. The labor pain. He, wouldn't, he was not going to do what God has asked him to do. And in wisdom, he decided to obey. Praise the Lord. The second thing we learn from Abraham, he obeyed God when it, is, when it did not make sense. You imagine this man has waited for a child for very many years. And after a long wait, you've got one only child who even should become, should inherit your property, your possessions. And again, God asks you to sacrifice. 
Now the human being was puzzled. But he obeyed even if it doesn't make sense. When we come to our situation, what, 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 what can we relate with obeying when it doesn't make sense? You imagine, maybe somebody is getting a little salary. And by the time the salary reach, you have even accumulated debt that is beyond the salary you are going to get. And you don't, don't have another, another, another source to live after. And in that salary, God require you to pick out tithe and bring to church. There are many believers who, who have failed this. Because they look at the circumstances around them. They look at the problem around them. They will say, this mother will not take tithe. I will not pay tithe. Because if anyone will pay tithe, I will not even finish all the debt I'm going to pay. I will have nothing to eat in the house. But Abraham, he did not question himself that I will not have any other child to inherit my proposition. He just obeyed. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's just pause there a bit. For the salary earners. For the business owners. For the student who live on pocket money. How many months have you skipped paying tithe? Because you believe obeying God doesn't make sense. How many times God has spoken to you to help somebody and you did not obey God because the situation you are in obeying God doesn't make sense. That's a question you can only answer by yourself. Praise the Lord. Yes, Another thing we can learn from Abraham. It did not delay obeying. When God asked for his son, it did not delay to obey. He realizes God who gave me. No, he wants it. Let me surrender and give. That's why. They said obedience is better than sacrifice. There are some people who are sacrificing, sacrifice obeying God due to the condition, the situation they are in. They will say this time, I will not support this person God has told me to support. This time, I will not even take my offertory to church because I've been offering, I've been taking offertory but I come and languish in poverty. My children are staying home without, without school fees. Things are not changing. My business is dying. Praise the Lord. Yes, we have a... Take us to the next slide. The next slide we see Abraham would not, would not let anyone interfere with him obeying God. By the time Abraham took his son, he took his servant too. And they were walking where God has asked him to sacrifice his son. And when he reached to the place where he can see the, the place of sacrifice, he asked his servant to remain and wait for him. Him and his son are the ones going to sacrifice to the Lord. He went with only is sacrifice that, Lord has, that God has asked him to sacrifice. He avoided interference. 
There are many believers When the Lord has instructed you to do certain things You want to consult from fellow believers You want to consult from your brothers You want to consult from another family But those people God has not spoken to them God spoke to you And it's you to obey Some of them will look at you as you are proud some of them will look at you as you think they cannot obey God the way you are doing. And because of consultation, many believers have failed to sacrifice the Lord because of God, they have got interference. Interference through discouragement words from, from fellow people they have been consulting from. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Another thing we see, Abraham understood obedience is worship. Praise the Lord. Yes, and many believers in many places they know worship to be a song that is sung here. But they, they do know that obeying, obedient to God is worship. There are principles that govern our life. In other words, there are do's and don'ts in the, in the work of salvation. And the do's and don'ts which, has written, which is written in the Bible. It is God God is word himself. When God requires you not to do certain things, you need to know that not doing it is worshiping God. You need to know that not doing it is worshiping God. And when God has asked you to do certain things, you need to know that doing it is worshiping God. There are very many people who have compromised that standard. A compromise their identity in Christ because they did not know that obedience is worship. Praise the Lord. Yes, The Lord created us. The primary purpose for his creation is for you and me to worship him. Not by singing a song by doing what he expects us to do by being where he wants us to be you remember Abraham was told earlier to leave his father's house to leave his relatives to leave what he has been enjoying in that land to go to the land he will show him because in that land he wants to bless him. He wants to make him known. He wants to create him a new legacy. Do you know how hard it is to live? your comfort zone where are you used to? Where life is very easy. If it was not because of obedience, even this set free would not be there. Because pastor would have stayed in their village. Because I believe they are seen to enjoy there. I believe he did not have, he had land that, that he didn't need money to buy. He did not need to believe God for land. He already has land. He did not need to believe God for the, for the believers because he already has friends and relatives in the community. But because God has spoken, God pulled him out of there and brought him here and he's blessing him. He's blessing him. Though sometimes he's not seen but the Lord is blessing him where he is is not where he began and where he is is not where he want to be and where he is is the pathway to where God is taking him 
To the bigger blessings is going to benefit from obeying God. And the last thing is Abraham trusted God. There are people who trust, who trust in their husband in their wife in their job in their salary in their possession you need to be like Abraham to trust God even when it is hard to understand we need to be, become like Abraham to believe God for everything you need to become like Abraham to believe God for everything don't you be tempted to find your way to do things the way you want because you don't enjoy the riches that come with, with the blessing of God above all tithing 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 is a principle God will honor so much Tithing. Let me speak to somebody who may, you may think you're not working, you're not owning a business, but you get some money. You get some little money. That money, you don't pick tithe out of it. Because out of that tithing, the Lord will honor His promise and bring for you greater wealth. Let me speak to somebody who may, you may think you're depending on the money from your parents. The little given to you, the little upkeep you got, you need to pick tight from it. Because out of that, you're going to draw a bigger wealth. Even when you're sleeping angry, even when you don't have what to put on. Even when the situation is understanding, pull out that little money. Pick tithe out of it. And give to God. Praise the Lord. We lift you up in the highest, Lord. You have the best plans for each one of us, Lord. Plans to progress us and prosper us. Blessing us every day, Lord. Somebody lift up that hand and say, Lord, bless me. Ask for that blessing. Daily ask for the blessing of God. It is that blessing that makes rich. You can have a job and still languish in poverty. You can be married and still struggle. If you do not have the blessing of God, there are things that will never be fixed in your life. From this day forth, crave for the blessing of God. The blessing from on high. The blessing that makes rich. The, the Lord's promises that in a little while he will shake the heavens and the earth and the blessings above will come down. The blessings beneath will come up. The blessings of the seas will come up. The blessings of the womb will come. Father, we need those blessings. And as we crave for those blessings, may you help us obey. Make that prayer. Say, Lord, help me obey. Help me obey. Help me follow your ways in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for thy word. We choose to obey. We choose to follow your ways. And we know that your blessings will follow us. Bless your servant, Pastor Emma. Continue to enrich him and favor him and protect him together with the family, Lord. And bless all of us as we leave this place. Give us a fruitful, joyful week in the name of Jesus. Go before us, lead us behind, 
be beside us, be all over us, in the name of Jesus. We thank you even for the sick in our midst, for as they arise, they receive their healing. They become whole. They receive the encouragement in the name of Jesus. And may you give us the grace to seek your face this week in prayer and fasting, Lord. Give us that grace. Reveal yourself to us more. We love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Someone give Jesus a mighty, mighty hand of praise. Hallelujah. Amen. And let's appreciate Pastor Emma for that wonderful Emma. word. And let's clap for ourselves for coming today. Thank you for coming. We pray that the Lord will continue to do wonders in your lives and give you testimony after testimony. Those of you visiting for the very first time, thank you for choosing to come. Pastor Dan will be saying hello to you. Hallelujah. Amen. Shake your neighbor's hands as we share the words of the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you so much. Thank you for coming. Have a wonderful week. You can now tithe or pay your offer to read the better way with MTN Momope. It's free and easy to use. Just follow these simple steps. Dial star 165 star 3 ash and select payments. Then enter merchant code. Our merchant code is 173119. They will ask you for the amount you want to offer. After that, enter your PIN and press OK. Remember to keep your PIN secure. Your tithe or offer will go to Shalom Set Free Life Mint Buloba. Using MTN Momo Pay is free of charge.